Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be going through the derivation of the geometric integral Lij and this is uh, similar to the Kij derivation that I just went through in the previous video. This is just a refresher for the naming convention here. So for the normal velocity and the tangential velocity for the source panel method we had Iij, Jij and then to keep them different in my code so it's not confusing, I made the normal and tangential for the vortex panel method, Kij and Lij. And it's important to keep these separate because uh, I'm gonna be making, after I finish my vortex panel method, uh, method videos, I'll be making a video that combines the source panel method and the vortex panel method, and it's clear now with IJKL where these values are coming from. So here you can see the tangential velocity equation. So we've already taken the partial derivative of the velocity potential with respect to the tangential, and we get the tangential velocity, VT, on the ith panel is equal to the free stream term. This we've already simplified down in my flow around an airfoil video, I'm pretty sure. And then this term here is from all of the vortex panels, noting that the gamma J, which is the vortex strength per unit distance is outside of the integral here because we are assuming that the vortex strengths are constant on each panel but can vary from panel to panel. And then here we have this integral term and that's the focus of this video. So down here I'm just defining what the Lij term is. We're saying it's just the integral term and we can plug in for theta Ij based off of the Kij video where I defined it. It's just the angle between the ith and the jth panel. And so you can see in here we have the d dti and then this is theta Ij and that is what we're evaluating to get the Lij term. So first we're going to evaluate the derivative of the inverse tangent term using the chain rule and the quotient rule. So first we have the derivative of the inverse tangent where the argument of the inverse tangent is a function of x because if you look down here the argument of the inverse tangent is a function of x and we have 1 over 1 plus f of x squared and then the chain rule since the argument's a function of x df of x dx where f of x in our case is a function in the form of a of, a of x over b of x. So we have a numerator and a denominator. And so from the quotient rule, we have the derivative. So that's, we're trying to evaluate this now. We have the derivative with respect to x of a of x over b of x is equal to this, which you can find in any calc book, b of x times a prime of x minus a of x times b prime of x all over b of x squared where a prime denotes a derivative with respect to x. And so now we'll just plug in the values. So we have what we're trying to evaluate down here. And so to evaluate this derivative, first we have this term here, one over one plus f of x squared. So we have one over one plus, and f of x is the argument inside the inverse tangent. So that's this, at this squared. Then we have times df of x dx, which is just this. And so we know that b of x is in the denominator. So we have xi minus xj. And then we have a prime of x dyi dti minus dyj dti. Then we have minus a of x. So that's just the numerator times b prime of x. So it's the derivative of the denominator. So dxi dti minus dxj dti. Denominator is just b of x squared. So that's just xi minus xj squared. So in the equation down here, we have these partial derivative terms that we want to simplify down. So we're gonna do a thing similar to the Kij derivation and substitute the following in for the partial derivatives. So if we look at a single panel for panel i, where we go from point k to point k plus one, you can see the tangential uh, vector points in the direction of the panel from k to k plus one. And we can draw perpendicular down and say that this distance here is dxi, this is dyi, and the angle here is the panel orientation angle phi i. And if we blow up this triangle here, then you could just see it a little bit clearer. And we can write the cosine of phi i is adjacent over hypotenuse, so dxi dti, and the sine of phi i is opposite over hypotenuse, dyi dti, and those we can substitute in for these two terms here. And we can also say that the mixed uh, partial derivatives where the subscripts are not the same are gonna be equal to zero. And so we have dxj dti is equal to zero and dyj dti is equal to zero. So we can plug those in for here. So for here, we're gonna plug in sine phi i minus zero. And here we're gonna plug in cosine phi i minus zero. The next thing we can do is simplify the first term in the equation, this term right here. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna break up the uh, this term right here. So this we're just gonna break out into this and we're gonna multiply this whole term by uh, xi minus xj squared over xi minus xj squared, which is just the same as multiplying it by one. And so you can see in the numerator, we just have this. So we have xi minus xj squared. In the denominator, we have this times one. 
that's here. And then if we multiply this term by this, the denominator and this cancel, and we just get yi minus yj squared. So we get this term right here. So I'm just taking the results from the previous whiteboard and plugging them into the expression down here, which hasn't changed from the previous whiteboard. So first we're gonna replace the first term, and that's this here. And then in this guy, remember we had the uh, sine term zero, the cosine term zero. So I've just plugged that in up here. And then we can simplify this expression by noting that we can cancel the numerator and the denominator here, which gives us just this over this, and that's what's shown right here. So we just have that same expression written up here, and since we're integrating over the jth panel, we want to rewrite the xj and yj variables as a function of sj, the distance progress variable along the jth panel. This is what we've done for every single geometric integral so far. So here is panel j, and the panel is going in this direction, and we have the distance progress along the panel sj, the panel orientation angle phi j, and an arbitrary point xj, yj, the starting point of the panel cap capital XJ, capital YJ. And so we can write this point right here as a function of this, this, and this. And so we have XJ is equal to capital XJ plus SJ cosine of phi J. So that's just the distance up to the up to this point along the x-axis. Similarly, the distance along the y-axis up to this point is yj is equal to capital yj plus sj sine of phi j. Note that these are phi j, not phi i. Also note that we don't need to convert the sine or the cosine terms up here because they are already in terms of phi. For the normal derivatives, they're in terms of delta initially, and so we had to convert them into uh, phi variables, but because we're talking about the tangential, we don't need to worry about that because it's already in terms of phi. Okay, so we're gonna start with the numerator. So that's what's shown up here. That's the same from the previous whiteboard. And then we're gonna plug in the xj and yj expressions that we also solved for on the previous whiteboard into here and here. So first we have xi minus xj minus sj cosine phi j times sine phi i, then we have minus, then we have yi minus, plugging in now, capital yj minus sj sine phi j times cosine of phi i. Now we're gonna distribute this term and this term through to this expression and this expression respectively, and so we have xi sine phi i minus xj sine phi i minus sj cosine phi j sine phi i minus, that's minus yi, cosine phi i, and then we have a minus minus, so that'll be plus yj cosine phi i, and then we have a minus minus, so that'll be plus sj sine phi j cosine phi i. Then we're gonna group the like terms, which are sine phi i, cosine phi i, and sj. So here we have sine phi i, sine phi i, so we have xi minus xj, that's this first term. Then we have the cosine phi i, cosine phi i, so we have yi, so we have minus yi minus yj, right? So this gives us the minus yi that's shown here, and this minus minus gives us the plus yj, okay? And that's for the cosine phi i term. And then for the sj term, we have this term here and this term here. So I said plus sj, and we're gonna take first the plus one here. So we have sine phi j cosine phi i, that's here. And we have minus cosine phi j sine phi i. Now we're gonna use the trig identity that can be found at the back of any calc textbook. Sine of a plus or minus b is equal to this expression, and since we have a minus, we're going to choose the minus, which is the bottom one, which is gonna give us a uh, minus sign. And so we have uh, which one's a and which one's b? Well, in the expression here, sine a cos b, so we have sine a cos b, so a is gonna be phi j, b is gonna be phi i, so we can plug in uh, phi j for a and phi i for b. And so we can uh, write the final expression as the same, this term is the same from up here, so that's given all the way here, plus sj, and then plugging in for this, we have sine of phi j minus phi i. And so here we have the final results. So for the numerator, this is what we got. And this takes the form of C, S, J plus D, where C and D are shown over here. And from my other video, from my IIJ derivation video, we have the denominator reduced to this. Okay, so if you want the full derivation, if you wanna know where this comes from, please go back and watch my IIJ derivation video. And this takes the form of SJ squared plus 2ASJ plus B, where A and B are given by these expressions here. And so our final integral for LIJ is given below 
uh, the integral over panel J of CSJ plus D, that's the numerator, and then SJ squared plus 2ASJ plus B, the denominator. And so this is in the same form that every single one of our other geometric integrals was, uh, namely the IIJ derivation is the important one because that's the video where I go through how to solve this, which then leads to this complicated looking solution, but it's not too complicated, uh, for LIJ where we have this first term and then the full second term here where a, B, C, D, and E are defined down here. Note that you need to make sure that you have your I, J uh, indices correct and your phi I and phi J indices correct. Okay, so we just need one more video before we get into the vortex panel method coding and results. So we've already gone through the derivation video for the I, I, J, J, I, J, M, X, and M, Y, I, J. That's all for the source panel method. And then we just went through in the previous video the K, I, J derivation, and now in this video the L, I, J derivation for the vortex panel method. The last video is the streamline uh, video for the vortex panel method, which will go through the derivation of N, X, I, J, and N, Y, I, J. Thanks for watching.